This is an amalgamation from a major research review study showing the different types of autoimmune conditions that so far to date have actually some research association with the onset uh, or, or with dairy. So we can start up here on the upper right. You see bipolar disorders, autoimmune uveitis. So this is a uh, eye disease, eye inflammation. We have MS or multiple sclerosis, as well as celiac disease, type one diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel. So this would be like Crohn's or UC, which is ulcerative colitis, um, as well as autism spectrum disorders, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, uh, sometimes referred to as ju juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And then we have idiopathic membranous nephropathy, which is a kidney disease, as well as schizophrenia, mental disorder, and Bichette's disease, uh, which can cause lesions on the skin and ulcers on the skin. So all these different conditions have been in some way associated with the consumption of bovine dairy. Now, I think it's important that we back that up. So this actually coming from a major review paper, but let's look at some individual papers on these linkages. So in this first one that I'm pulling up here, you can see mucosal reactivity to cow's milk protein and celiac disease, showing that um, a mucosal inflammation response similar to that elicited by gluten was produced by cow's milk protein in about half of the patients with celiac disease. Casein in particular seems to be involved in this reaction. So in this particular study, half the people um, had a reaction and the other half didn't, but that's pretty profound when you consider how many of you um, have gone gluten-free and continue to use dairy, um, but continue to also struggle and have potential problems. Then we have this one as uh, another review study. So bovine milk proteins as a trigger for autoimmune disease, myth or reality. You can see here in this review, the high incidence of allergies to cow milk components in autoimmune diseases is rising. So this is important to understand is that this didn't just happen. This is it's not something that has been going on forever, but this is an uh, 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 this is a unfortunate element in our society that is increasing with time. So it's rising, especially in Western industrialized countries where milk is a major dietary component, especially in processed foods. I think it's important to highlight that because there'd be many of you watching this wondering about, well, what about raw dairy or what about um, healthy dairy from potentially grass-fed, grass-finished cows? We'll get into that in a moment, so stay with me. But processed foods, again, when allergenic milk proteins face immature and susceptible immune system in children, it might represent a threat for future health. In other words, kids that don't have a fully developed immune system, a lot of times what happens in infancy is we get uh, these kids that maybe they're not being breastfed, uh, and so mom is giving them some kind of formula milk that's cow derivative, and their immune systems aren't fully developed. This is what they're referring to here. So for formulas and other milk products given to infants or infants. Um, when out, okay, so again, moving on here, several studies support strong evidence that exposure to dietary allergens during childhood can increase the risk of developing, what are we talking about here, autoimmune diseases, such as type one diabetes, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, neuropsychiatric disorders. Again, what, what did we say over here? We said, you know, one of the conditions here, schizophrenia, neuropsychiatric, as well as autism spectrum and bipolar. Again, these are neurological in nature. Okay, so we've got that study. Let's move it out of the way and let's pull up um, actually, I'm not ready for that one. Let's move over here. So this next one is on MS, and this one's actually recently published. Um, you can see here, 
the results obtained from they, so these these um, these researchers were doing research in mice, and then they crossed that over into human studies. And so you can see the research research obtained or results obtained from the mouse model were complemented by clinical data showing that serum samples from patients, human patients now, with multiple sclerosis contain significantly higher B cell and antibody reactivity to bovine casein. Again, bovine being cows, casein being the primary protein in cow's milk, uh, than those from patients with other neurologic diseases. In other words, these people with MS had higher reactivity to bovine casein protein. This reactivity correlated with the B cell response to a mixture of central nervous system antigens and could again be attributed to reactivity. While we acknowledge disease uh, among individuals with MS, we believe that consumption of cow's milk in a subset of patients with MS who have experienced a previous loss of tolerance to bovine casein may aggravate the disease. In other words, they're not saying that everyone with MS has dairy as a cause, but they're saying there's a subset of people with MS where dairy may play a major role uh, in the aggravation or the irritation of, uh, in, of the immune system leading to a progression of the illness itself. So. You can see here their, their, their final statement here, which is, our data suggests that patients with antibodies to bovine casein might benefit from restricting dairy products from their diet. So what's, you know, what's the takeaway with that? I mean, aside from you know, people with MS just avoiding dairy, uh, if you have got MS and you're wondering whether or not you should avoid dairy, the takeaway for you is get tested. If you, if you don't want to restrict your diet, if you're hesitant to restrict your diet, but you are suffering, Get tested. Get tested. Go to your doctor and ask them to test for you know bovine reactions. Predominantly, there are several different cow's milk proteins. There's uh, casein being one of the predominant ones, but there are a number of other ones like albumin and like albumin, etc. So get uh, a battery of tests for a multiple multitude of different types of dairy protein reactions and correlate whether or not it's something that you should be doing. Uh, again, especially if you have active disease state. Okay, let's pull this next one up. So you can see here, dietary factors and risk of islet autoimmunity and type 1 diabetes, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, again, recently published paper, numerous dietary components. You, hear, you guys, you hear me say this all the time. Numerous dietary components have been linked to the development of islet autoimmunity and type 1 diabetes. However, um, moving down here, this, so the interpretation of the study, the study suggests that breastfeeding and late introduction of gluten, fruit, and cow's milk may reduce the risk of type 1 diabetes, whereas high childhood cow's milk intake may increase it. So going back to what I said earlier about, um, about babies and formula, you've got you know, so many babies today being given uh, dairy-based or cow dairy-based formulas, and what this study is saying is that the, that the reduction of risk for the development of type 1 diabetes uh, is possible when avoiding cow dairy. Also, they mentioned gluten and fruit. Now, one of the interesting things about this, and I want to make just comment a little bit more on this here, is that if you look at what most pediatricians recommend, if you look at the like, American Pediatric uh, Association or Society, and what they generally recommend to infants, the first food that generally is recommended for infants, and this is generally between the age of a few months and up to six months, is baby cereals. Now, baby cereals contain what? They contain gluten, and gluten does what? It increases the risk for the development of autoimmune disease, especially in genetically predisposed individuals. So this is the first food they recommend. What's the second food that's generally recommended? Is fruit. Okay, so you got the first and the second, and then if the baby can't breastfeed, and again, I'm not picking on any of you that couldn't breastfeed or didn't produce the milk, uh, but the fact of the matter is this formula sales are astronomically high, and in my opinion, they're way too high. There's way too many babies being formula fed because we know that the potential detriment, the number one ingredient in formula, uh, in baby formula is typically some form of sugar, particularly fructose, from GMO corn, number one ingredient. You think that's what babies need to make them healthy? I mean, it's no wonder we're an obese nation. We're giving you know, so many of these children 
are just sucking down sugar disguised as milk formula. And, and you know, when you take that into account, the fructose here and the fruit here, and then you add to it the, the dairy element of the actual formula itself, and come back to this study and you look at, okay, what are they saying? The study suggests that breastfeeding and late introduction of gluten, fruit, and cow's milk may reduce the risk of type 1 diabetes, whereas child, high childhood cow's milk intake may increase it. It's kind of a no-brainer. Your kids need real food, ideally not processed food. Remember, formula is processed. And as we'll show you in just a minute, it processed food is one of the problems. And how we process the food can actually increase the risk, especially the dairy, uh, for the development of autoimmune disease. So, you know, major problem. Uh, actually, on that note, let's just talk about, about the processing. So this is a research study on milk processing. And so what they're, what they're showing here, that you see the title, Milk Processing Increases the Allergenicity of Cow's Milk, Preclinical Evidence Supported by a Human Proof of Concept uh, Provocation Pilot. Conclusion and clinical relevance, the study demonstrates that raw, unprocessed cow's milk and native whey proteins have a lower allergenicity, meaning they're less allergic, than their processed counterparts. The preclinical evidence in combination with the human proof of concept provocation pilot provides evidence that milk processing negatively influences how allergic the milk is. So again, processing, not a good thing. How many times have you heard uh, a doctor or nutritionist say, quit eating processed foods. Well, these are some of the reasons why. Okay, I got one more to show you here on milk and, and autoimmunity as a whole. The cow's milk and autoimmunity, another review paper. This again, recently published. You can see here, um, allergic reaction. So again, this is a summary of, of studies. I just wanted to point this section out down here. Allergic reaction in mice with CMA. My, now these are my studies. Uh, with cow's milk allergy are associated with numerous autoimmune disorders, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus, uh, and some other examples. So, and, and then you can see here additionally, the inflammation which becomes chronic because of cow's milk allergy may contribute to a group of autoimmune diseases. This review aimed to better understand the relationship between cow's milk and autoimmunity. So a lot of studies, a lot of research reviews and meta-analysis of prior studies that confirm there's definitely an association between cow's milk and autoimmunity. So then the next question is, well, is it all, is it all milk? Or is it just cow's milk? Or is it because the cow's milk is being processed? Or is there something else going on?